Senator David Perdue spent a couple days at the Winter White House with President Trump earlier this week. He joins me now to talk more about the president's agenda. Good evening, Senator. Hi, Mike. What can you tell us after spending so much time with President Trump this week about his mindset going into 2018? Well, the president uh, is working uh, diligently to get ready for 2018, but uh, he's very happy with the results of, of 2017, his first year in office. You know, two million new jobs, 860 regulations being reversed, illegal crossings of the southern border down 60 percent, uh, 500 people having lost their jobs in the in Department of uh, uh, Education or in the Veterans Administration, 300 in Department of Education for non-performance. Mm -hmm. um, this president is, is very excited about the future of our country now that we're moving to get this economy going again, Mike. Senator, it's going to be a busy year ahead. Let's take a look at some of the key items on the legislative agenda. Agreeing on a spending bill by January 19th to avert a partial government shutdown, including billions in additional aid to help hurricane victims, lifting the debt ceiling, extending a children's health insurance program. The president gave Congress until March 5th to make a legislative fix for DACA. Mr. Trump is set to release his long-awaited infrastructure plan in January and push for bipartisan deal with Democrats. Democrats. The president also said he wants to pursue welfare reform next year, and all this needs to be done before lawmakers shift their focus to the midterm elections in November. Senator, how hopeful are you about getting big things done in a midterm election year? Well, that's all you just mentioned sounds like we have a business guy in the White House for a change. I'm excited about that. He's moving at a business pace, not a bureaucratic pace. This president laid out four agenda items this year. We accomplished most of that. He's going to lay out his priorities for next year, many of, you, of which you just mentioned. Uh, and I'm excited about the prospects next year. Look, it is an election year, but we have a different leadership now in the White House. It's not going to be um, uh, waved off his priorities by an election process in November. Yes, we want to get additional votes in the Senate. We want to keep the House, but this president wants to continue to get results. This economy is going to move now that we've started with regulatory work and this tax uh, bill that we just passed. One of those issues on the agenda, sir, DACA, dealing with those young people brought to this country yeah. illegally by their parents. The president tweeted about it today, saying the Democrats have been told and fully understand that there can be no DACA without the desperately needed wall at the southern border and an end to the horrible chain migration and ridiculous lottery system of immigration, et cetera. We must protect our country at all costs. Your thoughts, Senator? Well, the president's been very consistent about that. He and Senator Cotton and I have been consistently saying that any solution for DACA has got to include an end to this archaic chain migration and money for border security at our wall in, on, on the southern border. Your colleague, Senator Marco Rubio, said tax reform may help U.S. corporations, quote, a little too much. On the other side, here is the attack from House Democratic Leader Nancy Pelosi. This is if they know they're going to lose the Congress. So they're just taking all the furniture, all the paintings off the wall, everything they can get to give away uh, to corporate America. <laughs> You're a former Fortune 500 CEO. What is your response to those criticisms? Well, both of those sound like something you would expect a Democrat to say. Look, that's what's wrong with Washington. These career politicians make these sweeping comments from a point of view that has no basis of experience in the free enterprise system. They just don't understand how the free enterprise system works. Look, Mike, the best thing we could do for the American worker, the American consumer, for anybody that works in America is to help our businesses, large and small, become competitive again with the rest of the world. Look, Nancy Pelosi's from a party that just gave us the lowest economic performance in eight years in the history of our company, our country, 1.9% growth. They're not exactly the people I'd look to for the future direction of the country. Senator, speaking of Democrats, President Trump vented his frustration with folks like West Virginia Senator Joe Manchin saying he talks bipartisanship but doesn't do anything. I asked House Majority Leader Kevin McCarthy last night about dealing with Democrats. I had a number of Democrats individually come up to me, tell me they liked the plan, they were going to vote for it. In the last days, they came to me and said that they were getting whipped from their own leadership that would not allow them to vote for the bill. We need to be able to break this logjam, to be able to work together, find common ground. So in that environment, Senator, how do you get anything significant done? 
Well, you heard, sir, you heard from uh, uh, Kevin McCarthy the problem. The problem is gridlock, and the minority party is causing that right now. But well, there are signs of encouragement. You know, we did pass a bill 97 to 2 this year that allowed the head of the Veterans Administration to fire people for cause. And since that time, uh, they have fired over 500 people, and the Veterans Administration is getting better. So there are points of view that, that we need to bring in here. But frankly, this immigration issue is one that we have to have a bipartisan solution. And we believe we can do that early in this new year. The president's going to keep focus on that uh, as we get back to work next week. Well, Senator David Perdue, thank you for your time, sir. I look forward to seeing you back here on Capitol Hill in the new year. Absolutely, Mike. Thanks.